Uh, so, Martin, on England's exit, where are you at with that? Because we're hearing, oh, Gareth's got to stay on. 2024. That you sounds know, condescending, Jim. So you don't change, agree, no? Uh, you, 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 at this time, I you, as a Scotsman, you give your eye teeth to get to achieve what we achieve in the there World you Cup. Go, get you? one in early, Martin, and quite right. right. You're quite right to do that. We weren't there; you were. Yeah, um, but yet again, when I don't think need, we should take anything away from when what it Gareth really achieved. meant something. You missed out. Yeah, because we were playing against the world champions, Jim. We went toe to toe with the world champions, and we were able to play a system now that allows us to because we've got really good players in that midfield area. We played that world, that the, the game against France with six players that played formerly in the last World Cup. Oh, 20, I know, I know, I know. Twenty eighteen. I know, but let's Jim. talk about England. And what missed, we've missed, had, what, oppor missed what, opportunity or glorious failure? Uh, I th yeah, I think so, we said without doubt it's a missed opportunity. But I'm not going to condemn people for actually going out of the competition in the way they did. I'm certainly not going to condemn uh, Harry Kane for missing a penalty when he had the weight of the nation on his shoulders. For anyone who does that, is uh, doesn't understand football and doesn't have an empathy and a sympathy with professional footballers. They are paid a lot of money and people are talking about, OK, you paid that kind of money, you don't make mistakes. Yes, you do. He stood up, he was brave enough to take it, but he missed. And, I, and you'd have almost put your mortgage on him, Jim, because he is an well, outstanding I'm footballer. I'm glad I didn't. But he missed on this occasion. Yeah, but I know, I know. But at the end of the day, Martin, when when are we ever going to hear... Yeah, yeah. We need to think long and hard now. We hear that Gareth Southgate, obviously himself, will think long and hard as to whether or not he carries on. But there is no doubt there's a trend here. Now, I, that, yeah, sure, you can say what you like. This is a Scotsman telling an Englishman. Yeah, sure. Well, it sounds you, like it, yeah. Whatever you want to read into that, fine. But Russia, gone, semi-final stage. You should have gone through. Trippier put you ahead. That was a, that was a great opportunity and that was another missed opportunity so take we all know what happened at Wembley against the Italians penalty shootout sure it's a lottery but you let them back in and you didn't change it in the second half and now this so what makes you think anything's going to change for England and you'll lift a serious trophy above your heads in the next what makes me think is the, or so. is the improvement and how the team keeps developing and I talked about 2018, you had six players that started that game in the semi-final. You've added to that the likes of Saka and Foden, Bellingham and Rice in midfield, top players. So I see that progression. I see the managers getting ever better. I don't think it was ideal that he didn't have a lot of um, Premier League experience, Gareth, going into, into the club, into the international management. And I do think we'd have got maybe there quicker and his growth would have been quicker. But I don't feel see anybody else better to do the job. And he should take it forward. And believe that he can actually... Go. We play with belief now, not hope, as we did in 2018. Because we have a midfield uh, that can really go after the, the opposition. Have you not always played with belief? I don't believe... I, I, I'm looking at it and thinking, well, OK, this was so new in, in 2018 that they were kind of finding their way and found themselves into a semi-final. You, we went. At, we lost the group stage game against Belgium, as you know. And the argument is, every time we play against anybody that we should really beat, or might be difficult, we don't win. Well, that's but, still the case, well, it's, though, it's isn't it? It's not an argument, is it? It's yeah. a statement of fact. That's a yeah, statement of fact. It, yes, but the, we and look that's at, still the case. Look at who we're up against, though. So when we talk about Croatia in a game that we went out, Jim, they were at the semi-finals again this year. These are good top players, team, yeah, top but, top teams. But we accept all that. Top nations. We accept all that. And I accept the argument. I do accept the argument that if you haven't got someone better to replace Gareth Southgate with then what would be the purpose of replacing him? If I were the England setup and I didn't have someone better to replace him with or someone in my consideration, given all, all circumstances, Gareth Southgate not wanting to stay or, or us deciding as the FA that we wanted to replace him, I would surely have a preparedness in my mind to look around and say, who would I want and can I get them? If I can get someone better, then I would replace Gareth Southgate. If I couldn't get someone better, and I've given him a two-year contract prior to a tournament. I don't really quite understand why the, the narrative of this is that Gareth Southgate is deciding. When did it become that the tail wags the dog? When did it become the person that works for somebody de decides what he will and won't do? When he signed a contract, Gareth is a man of integrity. He would have known that signing a contract in a tournament, prior to a tournament, that ultimately gets us knocked out in a quarter-final, is going to have certain reviews attached to it. So I don't understand this narrative that we're waiting for Gareth Southgate to well, decide what he will and won't do. So in, in, in defence of Gareth Southgate... I, I understand your point of view. Against the alternative argument of that, the players that he's been able to have select from have got better. Nothing to do with Gareth Southgate. That's to do with the development of these players in their domestic careers, and they've now been made available to the England setup, and he's picked them. When we look at the dynamic of how you win something, a manager becomes, when you've got good players, 
There's another factor that determines whether you win games, possibly. The balance of probability says you may not. And that's the X factor that Gareth Southgate does not have, mm. will never have. And when we get to the European Championships in 2024, we will pe perform commendably for arguably the most powerful domestic league in the world with the most patronage behind them, the most support and the most powerful support. And we'll be sat here saying, well, it was good. And we, t we turned up against a French team who on paper, we looked, but we looked, we didn't look like we could beat. On the day, we could have and should have beaten because we were the better side, but probably 60% of that game. We were, yeah. I, and the English Premier League has been the best league for for many years. And yes, the players are developing. I don't. I, I, if you're creating a narrative that the only reason we're not changing Gareth is because we haven't got a better replacement, that's completely wrong as well. well who's the who's the replacement? Well, I don't, I, I don't think it's about I, that. I, I, I think he stays Brendan in Rogers. the job because of what he's achieving, not because he has no one else to replace him. I think it suggested Brendan Rodgers. I think three. No. In any other walk of life, no. you get three strikes and you're out, right? And you're going to make this endless football narrative. And it's always like, there's always one more game. It's, eventually, there ain't one more game. And the season finishes and people can't keep trotting out the narrative that it'll get better next week. We've had three tournaments. And in each tournament, somehow, we've managed to miss an opportunity. Whether the Croatians are good or not, we didn't change to match the Croatian change in the second half. Whether the Italians are a good side that didn't qualify for the ensuing World Cup, we didn't change when the momentum was being shifted. And in this game... And I've spoken to other professional footballers, so I take it from the point of view of people like yourself. They believe that when the opportunity was there and the French were floundering and we got ourselves back in the game, the opportunity was load it up and go after them. And that meant make changes from the 54th minute until when the French yeah. scored. And we didn't, and that's a manager sitting there well, to cover that off. sticking or twisting. I tell you what, that, what, what that, we will that, do, that, man, at this cover stage, we'll, we'll just what, take no, a, Jim, one second, one second, because he's spoken a lot there. No, we're going what? to take a break. It's a commercial radio station. Mm, okay. Martin, as we're going to the break, though, well, I'm looking at many messages. Martin, no name in this one. Martin crying about the pressures of footballers, how there's little sympathy crying. for them. He's saying he'd put his mortgage on Kane to score. This after his wee whinge about Lynch and the real workers trying to get a wage. Not much empathy, Martin, for the working man and the pressures of feeding his family and keeping a roof over their heads. Pressure of a penalty miss. Are you making this up, Jim, again? Give no, me he's reading a break. It. I'm reading it. I'm reading it. They're coming in, Martin. I wouldn't make anything up, mate. Is there anything complimentary there? I will have is a anyone look. in agreement with me? Or is it just a two, you two no against bit. whoever comes into the studio? Oh, dumb so bloody silly. Because <laughs> someone doesn't agree with your opinion doesn't mean it's a... Them against up on you, does us. It? They're, they're, they're infamy, infamy. They're all going to infamy. I thought you were the presenter, Jim. Now we've become a pundit since Coming been away up to 10 20. We'll sort this out in the break. I better get brave. Why is it it would appear that it's Gareth's decision and not the FA's? So, so sh if that is the case, Martin, should it be the situation that it's down to Gareth to decide whether or not he carries on? Because after all, as Simon rightly said, the FA extended his contract before a ball was kicked over in Doha. Jim, when he was asked the question, he just lost a game, a really important game of massive importance in the World Cup, and he wanted, he, he was considering his his future. I would think that's pretty pretty normal, no? Would you? Well, his aspirations and dream then? was to win the World Cup. That's what he was. But why he was sign a contract? For. Okay, I, then roll that back. I tell you what, FA, I don't need a new contract. I'll talk to you after the tournament. That's what I'd have done, unless I wanted a new contract. Unless I felt that there was a there was a benefit to me to have a new contract, so why then is it a different narrative? When I understand the emotion of after losing a game, and of course we've all been on the receiving end of it as an owner, more sharply as a player, but notwithstanding it, after a game your emotions are more raw. So I get that context, but he has a two year contract. But he said, it's, didn't he, that it was a very difficult eighteen months leading up to the World Cup. Oh, boohoo! But, so but, but, easy, no, but he loved every moment of the World Cup, and that refreshed well, probably it. refreshed his view of being the England manager. So he's maybe a little bit torn. We'll see. I think he'll make the right decision, whatever he, I think he decides. Resign. I think he'll resign. Well, let's wait and see. Why to try and preempt a future when it's so close at hand? Because so he's called an opinion. I mean, Martin Tony, Tony, Tony Adams is a man you know well and a man you re, you respect. I'm quite You're sure. You're going to bring Tony into this. So Tony you? says, "I'm fed up with us being plucky losers. After we lost to France, all the talk was well done. England, jolly good defeat." Keep your heads held high. Yes, we gave everything, but they need an experienced serial winner around the place. Gareth doesn't lack courage. He has tremendous courage, but he's a good loser. It's hard to say that, but it's the truth. Now, that's Tony Adams saying that. Well, that's just his view. That's how, it, how he sees it. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that Gareth Southgate keeps, is one of those people that keeps improving, keeps finding a way on this journey, and eventually ends up with that trophy in his hands. And we're 18 months away from that. Um, if we don't win 
the Euros next time round, which is not going to be an easy one either, Jim, to be fair. Well, um, so Euros, then, it won't be if easy. we weren't to win that, then I think then it's a case of, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a journey that he's been on. I tried to cover off with you in terms of like, um, like people are saying he's not proactive in his decision making. And yeah, oh, I, 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 see, I see that a little bit. And I think really, Jim, that's because if you look, if you condense the, the life of, a, of an international manager, he's had 80 matches right now. If he was a club manager for longer, he probably would have done that almost in one season. And I think if you're a chess player or you're going through those scenarios, you know what moves to make. You've tried to play different systems. There is a... Um, there if could, I, if it I could be to, quicker when I, they make I'll decisions. I'll cut to the chase. If I was to say to you on the flight out to Qatar, Martin, you're going to go out at the quarterfinal stage. Would you have been comfortable with this that? This is what I expected. The French well, game was all... The, fr the wall chart was always saying, wasn't it? This game is do or die. And we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world champions. One thing I would say, though, Jim, is with, with the system we have, we didn't find a way to contain Griez Griezmann in the match. That surprised me. I thought they'd have been all over that in their analysis because I was, I was raving about him before the tournament even started, long before everyone's on that journey now, and they can see it's obviously an obvious talent. But he was finding the little pockets of space. We, playing, we were sitting with one midfield player with two in advanced, and he was finding a little pocket of space each time, really hurting us, Jim. It's his cross that, was, that set up the goal, for um, for Giroud to score the winner, so we just we didn't find a way to stop him, and maybe we could have copied the way they played. So Jim, we were playing with one sitter and two either side. The changes that should have been made really was to take Foden into a central position and play off the front in the same way the French were, and we could have put Sterling or Grealish onto a wing position. I know you're not really listening because I'm talking tactics. It's gone completely over your head. But that's what I'm talking about. And these are the things that we should be talking about to go ourselves, Gabe, don't if we up, had the opportunity. Don't, go, don't get upset, man. Don't get I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out things that people can't see what's going on in the studio behind them. Don't, don't get upset. I, I think at, at the end of the day, um, obviously, obviously, there's a bit upset. to go yet. There's a bit to go yet. There and, and we will know in the fullness of time whether or not Gareth it carries on. Do you it think he's carry an elite on. manager? Do you but think he's an elite manager? I was manager? just about to ask you the same thing. I think he's an elite leader. Where does his status you have him manage in management? Um, let's think about that one. Did you? Well, interesting. If you look at Arteta, really the experience he had. I mean, he's grown into the job. Sure. He's been given time. Uh, a lot of people are saying he shouldn't have got it, but that he's proved that wrong. So maybe that's something Gareth Southgate could do as well. Let's see. Let's let's Gareth do the talking when he gets time. Yeah, uh, I I've not, five I've, not time. I've not lost belief. Uh, what I saw on that pitch, my eyes w d weren't lying. What I saw, uh, I saw a very strong. Everyone performance. knew what was going to happen. I'm sorry that you don't like this. Everybody knew that there was a distinct possibility. The moment we came up against a side that we, on paper, perhaps shouldn't beat. We didn't. But we got closer this time, didn't we? We got closer. Did you feel, did oh, you great. have the impression? So, 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 did you so, have the so impression? We came second in a Did game. you have the impression that we were the dominant team in that game? Yes, very much so. So and is that, what, is that not a step what, forward? And, and I think that was as much We about, weren't just hanging on, I were think we, that's, that, for that, dear that, life? That's very true. But I also think that, that that is an opportunity that you take. And those that win things take the opportunity and they have the courage of their convictions to turn around and say, after 54 minutes, 60 minutes, we've got this game now. They're on the rack. What do we do to twist their... But I think there were moments. No. I think there were moments in the game. I think the first goal, I think Pickford should have been just a couple of yards further forward in the goal. I think he was a little bit too far back. OK, it came from... Oh, you could say okay. Bellingham should have closed him down. No, I but think Bellingham did... Martin, to, there are ifs and buts and everything. Yes, and this I think the, I, I, I think the second no goal... I think the second goal, I think the second goal we could have marked better in the box. Is this know? a great French side? I, th I think the 11 they put out is pretty damn good to me. But is it a great French side? Yes. It's a great French yeah. side. Too many in that midfield now are stepping up. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's a great French side. And I you keep on saying it's the world champions. but the, You, you know, don't think Mbappe's fantastic. a great player? You don't I think do, Dembele's come to the fore? You they? don't think Giroud is absolutely. an underrated striker? A absolutely. I think they're you very good players. You don't think Griezmann is one of the best I, team players? I think at, they're good players. And I can listen, I can Canate. listen alternatively. Did you not see Canate's performance the other night? I think they're good Absolutely players. Absolutely outstanding. But, but the point I'm making is I don't think it's Biron a great French side. Veron now playing in a way that we expected him to at Manchester United. Again, Martin, I understand your point of view, but I don't think it's a great French side. And you, I think we have I think an it opportunity. Is. I think it is. Well, you know, they'll probably win the World Cup, which will make it great by definition. But when you look at it on paper, England again turned up to World Cup, beat precisely who they should do, and lost against someone that maybe they could have beaten. And if that's the continued trend, once twice, three times, you lot keep running your head against the wall and the village idiot that Danny Mills is well, that keeps on saying the same thing because he's his mate, he can do the same thing as well. It's a good job you're not on the FA board, isn't it? Because we know what, we, what decision we've made. You'd be, I'd, you'd be I'd, firing I'd, the manager, No, you? what I would be doing is saying, here's what I'd be doing because I've already, already answered that question. Unless I had someone better, 
I would say to Gaff, so I've, I've given you a contract. That's no two. reason to keep anybody, is it? Well, I've given him a contract. If the decision so if, if has was, to be made to, to change someone, you do. If I was given him a contract, then I would expect him to honour it, and it wouldn't be a discussion about what Gaff Southwick's going to do because the, do the, the contract's already been signed. In this instance, in this instance, if I had a better alternative, if I didn't, I'd say, what's the point of this discussion? Mm. We are where we are. I've made my decision. I've given you a contract for another two years. Off you go, Gareth, and try and produce me a winning side for once. Not everybody's um, uh, agreeing with us, Simon. D there's, a, there's a message here. Don't worry, Jim. Simon, and his your fullness of time phrase, Jim, um, or Simon's narratives. Gareth needs time. Martin's right. Look at Fergie at United. He was in the cusp of being sacked uh, because things weren't going well. Uh, and then he became a leap manager. Yeah. Um, Simon's just yeah. What Simon's I mean, just told you goes against his argument about being proactive. He's criticising Southgate for not being proactive in his decision making. If you want him out, you sack him. That's what you should be doing. I if you were in charge of the FA. If I was in charge of the not F giving him an opportunity to carry charge, on because he's just got a contract. FA, I would have done two Hippo things. I would have given him a new contract before a tournament was put in place. And I would have you wouldn't done, have done no, I wouldn't have done. I would have gone, here's your tournament manager. Oh, and at the end of this tournament we'll review it, okay? And if you're happy and we're happy, we'll carry on. And in the background in the background, I've done my due diligence to go, who can I get? Can I get Pochettino? Can mm. I get Brendan Rogers? Can I get who if I want? And if I can, I'll say, Gareth, thanks very much. You failed again. You haven't given us what we need. Well done for building us a harmonious environment. Well done for being nice to the media. You're talking about Brendan Rogers. He lost the first nine games of the season and okay, he, won, well, he won three games since and now you want to give him the image. I am tempted to wish everybody a happy Christmas at this stage but that maybe it's not the time to do it. Uh, you want to take part in this and, and many of you do, then why not? 03717 22344 half ten.